We're off and running. We have a very familiar lesson today. You yeah. think maybe we can learn something from this familiar lesson? <laughs> you know, uh, hey, the lesson focal point, of course, is on the key steps, but there's so much in here. I'm going to try to go through this and comment and see if we can learn something new out of this chapter. What are you okay. going to start at? 17.1. Huh? 17 verse 1. 17.1. Yeah. You're right? really going way back on. <laughs> well, our lesson is all in chapter 17. Right? Now the Philistines gathered their armies for battle. And they were gathered at Sokol, which belongs to Judah, and camped between Sokol and Ezekiah in <laughs> Ephes Damnin. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, the point is, the Philistines are back for battle, and they're in Judah. So they've already invaded, right? Do we know where these towns are in Judah? Southwest Judah. Okay, thank you. Right. Now, it wasn't but a couple of chapters ago that a young man named Jonathan... Uh-huh decided to take on a whole bunch of Philistines by himself. And with the Lord's help, he wiped out a bunch of them, right? And then the battle went, <clears throat> took off, and then the Israelites routed the Philistines, right? But they decided to quit chasing them down and didn't wipe them all out. And now here they are coming back again, okay? Now... The question becomes, what made them think, you know, that if the God of Israel had given the Israelites victory over the Philistines, a major victory, here the short while later they decided to come back and ask for more? I'm guessing they heard that Samuel had abandoned Saul. Ah. And that Saul's army would not have the Lord with them this time. Right? So they're coming back. <laughs> so now, <coughs> Saul and the men of Israel were gathered and camped in the valley of Elah and drew up in battle array to encounter the Philistines. Now, this whole thing is only about 12 miles from Bethlehem, but because of the hills, it takes mm -hmm. like a day to travel that 12 miles, right? It really did like to fight back then. <laughs> Everything was about the land, right? Who controlled mm -hmm. the most land, okay? Now, we had a comment. I made a comment a couple of weeks ago about the Philistines as to where they had migrated from. Do anybody remember? These people were not native to the Middle East, right. per se. They had come either from Crete or Greece, <laughs> Huh. I don't remember that. And took up shop here in what today we would call the Gaza Strip. Oh, okay. Yeah. Area, right? Mm -hmm. The Philistines stood on the mountain on one side, the Israel stood on the mountain on the other side with the valley between them. And at this stage of the history, they're kind of equal powers, mm -hmm. right? So here they are lined up on each side. Then a champion came out from the armies of the Philistines named Goliath from Goth, whose height was six cubits and a span. <laughs> right? Now, this concept of the champion coming out to fight, and you send out your champion to fight, and let the champions determine the outcome, that comes back from Greece. You remember in... Uh, uh, Troy, the Battle of Troy, mm -hmm. and Achilles went and killed the, the Trojan, you know, that kind of thing. That's where this comes from, huh. right? So, but anyway, he comes out. Now, six, <laughs> six cubits and a span. 
Anybody know how long a span is? Hey, Dean. No. It's a span. A span. A span. Yeah. From here to here. here, to here. Six inches. You know, about nine. Well, it depends on how big your, your hand, hand is. is. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> how long is a cubit? From the elbow to... Apparently from here to here. To there. Right? And in the old days, you know, it was, I mean, we consider it to be about 18 inches, but a mm -hmm. lot of people think it's closer to 21. Could be. Right? So he's somewhere between 9 foot 9 inches tall mm -hmm. and almost 12 feet. We could use that <coughs> on the Thunder Team. <laughs> and how tall was the average human back then? Oh, God. In that part of the world? I don't know. About 5, five foot. Five foot. And this guy, so he's twice as tall. This is a really impressive physical person. Right? He doesn't have his clothes tailor made. Yeah. <laughs> and his armor. And his armor, God. <laughs> right? No so we get a description of that. He had a bronze helmet on his head and he was clothed with scale armor which weighed 5,000 shekels of bronze, which is about 125 pounds. <laughs> he also had bronze greaves on his legs. What? What are those? They're the uh, like shin, shin guards, right? Okay. And a bronze javelin slung between his shoulders, and the shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and the head of his spear weighed 600 shekels of iron, which yeah. is about seven pounds. Not at all. Right? <laughs> Yeah, his shield carrier also walked before him. They had all this armor on. He didn't really need a shield. So he had a guy bring his shield out, you know, for impression. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he got a separate guy just to carry his shield. And he stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel and said to them, Why do you come out and draw up in battle array? Am I not the Philistine and you servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will become your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall become our servants and serve us. Now, we all know that Goliath got killed. Did the Philistines drop their weapons and become servants? I don't. No. Rename. <laughs> kind of like they, they never had any plan to actually do that. Again, the Philistines said, I defy the ranks of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Because? They knew they couldn't beat him. Because <laughs> he won big dude, <laughs> right? Now, what happened to Saul's bravery? He attacked the Ammonites, and he'd had all these battles he'd won, and he's doing great, you know, and then, but now he's afraid. Why? The Spirit of the Lord's not with him. Yeah, exactly. The Spirit has left him, right? Mm -hmm. How brave are we without the Spirit? <laughs> Pretty much the same. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I have a question. We know that David's going to come, mm -hmm. right? Where is Jonathan? I would think he'd be with his father. And he's the one that started the earlier mm -hmm. battle by attacking the Philistines by himself. <laughs> Hmm. Is that any different than attacking one big dude? He attacked a whole bunch of dudes. Huh. <laughs> but where is he in this story? Where's who? Jonathan. Jonathan. No, he's probably with Jesse. No, Jonathan, Saul's son. He's probably with Saul, but oh. the point is... God had chose David for this fight. Mm -hmm. So he was not inspired by God to attack Goliath like he had been to attack the Philistines just a couple of years earlier. Okay? Sometimes God calls us to do things, and sometimes even though we think it's a good idea, God hadn't called us to do it. That's for somebody else. This uh, says in... 
did that twice a day for 40 days, uh, how long would they have let that go on? Well, I think they were ready for battle right at that 40th day. I don't know there would have been a 41st day. But we, we don't know that for sure. Hmm. But they, they're having trouble <coughs> mustering up the courage to go to war with that dude standing out there. Yeah. Right? Now, David was the son of the Ephraimite in Bethlehem in Judah, whose name was Jesse, and he had eight sons, and Jesse was old in the days of Saul, advanced in years among men. The three older sons of Jesse had gone after Saul to the battle. And the names of his three sons who went to the battle were Eliab, his firstborn, the second was Abinadad, and the third was Shammah. We've seen their names before, haven't we? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just last week when David was anointed. <laughs> right? Now, David was the youngest, and the three oldest followed Saul. But David went back and forth from Saul to tend his father's flock at Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. Right? This is kind of interesting to me because David, who's now in the palace, right? In the courts. Oh, yeah. Right? And he's even supposedly becoming Saul's armor bearer. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of a big shot in that sense. But yet he has no problem going back to his dad's house and tending his father's sheep, which is considered the lowest job on the planet. <laughs> right? Doesn't bother him. You know, he's a humble dude. Right? Mm-hmm. He's very comfortable in either place. Okay? And it, now, he's going back and forth. <laughs> he's playing the harp and singing for Saul. <laughs> we had that verse that said he was becoming the armor bearer. Mm -hmm. But we're going to find out in a little bit. Saul's like, who is this dude? <laughs> like he didn't know who he was. Yeah, funny. Anyway. <clears throat> And the Philistines came forward morning and evening for 40 days and took his stand. Then Jesse said to David his son, Take now for your brothers an ephah of this roasted grain and these ten loaves and run to the camp to your brothers. Bring also these ten cuts of cheese to the commander of their thousand and look into the welfare of your brothers and bring back your news of them. Now why is he going? He's delivering food. Because? Because they're running out of food. So he's acting as... You think Jesse food. knows they need food? Probably. Probably not. Well, maybe not. The point is, it just, the point is, his dad sent him. Yeah, and he obeyed him. He just did what his dad asked him to do, mm -hmm. right? How big is an epa? Epha. Epha? Uh, or how many? I think it's a half a bushel. <laughs> oh, okay. Something like that, right? Okay. <clears throat> Probably had it in a sack on his back. Yeah. Yeah. And he sent her to find out what's going on with his three older sons. Mm -hmm. For Saul and they and all the men of Israel are in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. So David arose early in the morning and left the flock with a keeper and took the supplies and went as Jesse has commanded him. And he came to the circle of the camp while the army was going out in battle array, shouting the war cry. The army is going out in battle array, Jerry, shouting the war cry. I think they're getting ready to get after it I at this point. I think so. Okay? You know, but David is there because Jesse sent him. Mm -hmm. Doing nothing but obeying his father. And Israel and the Philistines drew up in battle away, army against army, David left his baggage in the care of the baggage keeper and ran to the battle line and in, entered in order to greet his brothers. He, and he was talking with them, behold, the champion of the Philistine came from Goth, named Goliath, was coming up from the army of the Philistines, and he spoke these same words, and David heard them. Now, had all the other guys heard him? <laughs> yeah. Forty days, twice a day, right? And what was their reaction? Fear. Yeah. Yeah, I hovered in the corner. 
When all the men of Israel saw the man, they fled from him and were greatly afraid. Probably like I would be. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine that? that right? And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man who is coming up? Surely he is coming up to defy Israel, and it will be that the king will enrich the man who kills him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. Hmm. That means no taxes. Your sons will not be required to go to war, you know, like it was before there was a king. <laughs> you'll be the only house to go back to the old way, <laughs> right? Not to mention you become a prince because you're going to marry his daughter. Okay, so this is a, a big reward for anybody who can take down Goliath. Now, does Saul actually think anybody can do this? <laughs> And David spoke to the men who were standing by him, saying, What will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should taunt the armies of the living God? <laughs> this is a leftover from the days of the giants. Yeah. One of them. yeah. Well, Goliath's this... brother didn't... <clears throat> Didn't he, he have had, a brother that was a giant also? He had four of them. Four of them, okay. <laughs> right. But I thought so. <clears throat> David has a complete different reaction. What do we know about David from the anointing? He was anointed king, and what happened? The spirit came oh, upon him. Oh, came upon him, him. yeah. Let us so the spirit him. resonant with David <clears throat> hears this taunting and reacts like, are you kidding me? <laughs> this measly little human being wants to taught the armies of the living God they're seeing a giant David's seeing a peewee compared to God what is he an ant <laughs> less than an ant that it's going to get stepped. right it's all a matter of perspective isn't it and the people answered him according to the word, saying, Thus it will be done for the man who kills him. Now Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men, that Eliab's anger burned against David and said, Why have you come down? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your insolence and the wickedness of your heart, for you have come down in order to see the battle. <laughs> Isn't that funny? The youngest son is being persecuted again. This reminds mm -hmm. of Joseph. Joseph, yeah. Who went to see his brothers, and what did they do to him? Uh, Threw him in the well and the sold well. him into slavery and told his father he'd been killed. killed. Right? Mm -hmm. Eli would probably like to do the same thing to David. Because, you know, he got passed over. Mm -hmm. He was the oh, firstborn. Right. Yeah. He was the tall one. Right? He thought he was the next king. Mm-hmm. And Samuel said, no, it's not you, dude. <laughs> and God has not chosen you. The inheritance would go to the first. Look man. at the difference between Eliab, who God did not choose, and Jonathan, who actually is in line to be king, mm -hmm. who God did not choose. Mm -hmm. And look at Jonathan's reaction to David versus David's own brothers. Right? But David said, what have I done now? <laughs> Was it not just a question? And he turned away from him to another and said the same thing. The people answered the same thing as before. When the words which David spoke were, were heard, they told them to Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail on account of him. Your servant will go out and fight this Philistine. Who's David concerned about? Was it himself? Was he looking for honor? Let no man's heart fail. You got, he's like, what are you guys so afraid of? It's all right. I'll go fight this Philistine. <laughs> and he probably said it like, I'll go fight this Philistine. <laughs> this uncircumcised, <laughs> right? Who on earth does he think he is, right? You know, 
And Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are but a youth, while he has been a warrior from his youth. Saul's mm -hmm. probably 30. David's probably 17, <laughs> right? You had to be 20 to go into the army. Mm -hmm. We know that from uh, uh, Numbers 1-3. But David said to Saul, Your servant was tending his father's sheep when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock. I went out after him and attacked him and rescued it from the mouth. And when he rose up against me, I seized him by his beard and struck him and killed him. Grabbed him by the beard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know a bear had a beard. Had a beard. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever fur around his face, boy, David yeah. just took him down. All right? Now... God gives us all skills for a reason, right? And we should be refining those skills and do the best we can with them. God's given David a talent. He can play the harp. <laughs> he can yeah. sing. He's humble. Right. And he has no problem killing a lion and a bear, <laughs> let alone a giant, <laughs> right? But who is actually the source of this ability? God. God is, with the Spirit. That God is. is, right? Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine, <laughs> <laughs> right, will be like one of them since he has taunted the armies of the living God. David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, go, and may the Lord be with you. That is about the best thing he could have said, right? Mm -hmm. May the Lord be with you. Sometimes we say that just in casual passing, you know, without giving it as much thought as we should, right? With the meaning that it should come with it. May the Lord mm -hmm. be with you, right? Big L, not a small L. You know, now David's response to Saul is, are you kidding me? You're just a kid. You can beat this giant. You know, he gave him a reasonable response. He didn't get defensive about it or anything. He said, well, let me tell you what God has done, you know. And Samuel clothed David with his garments and put a bronze helmet on his head, and he clothed him with his armor, and David girded his sword over his armor and tried to walk, and he had not tested them. So David said to Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not tested them. And he, David took them off. He wasn't used to that stuff, mm -hmm. right? He wanted to be free and limbo and fast. Matter of fact, when David becomes king, he has a whole regiment in his army of people just like that. Mm -hmm. They will run up, attack with the slings and whatnot, and then run away. And then run away. Right? And you can't <laughs> get them because they're not there long enough. <laughs> But they're deadly with those slings. <laughs> right? Yeah. And he took his stick in his hand and chose for himself five smooth stones, maybe one for each brother. <laughs> <laughs> right? And put them in the shepherd's bag, which he had, even in his pouch. And his sling was in his hand, and he approached the Philistine. You know, now, the armor probably was too big anyway. Mm -hmm. Remember, Saul was tall. Mm -hmm. Right? We don't see anything in here about David being tall. Eliab was, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. You know, so it probably didn't fit. You know, 17, he's, you know, pretty much grown, mm -hmm. you know, but not as big as Saul. And so now he's got all the stuff that he's used to, to using. Mm -hmm. Okay? The Philistine came out and approached David with his shield bearer in front of him, all the pompous and whatnot, right? And when the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy with a handsome appearance. <laughs> the Goliath's probably about 30, and he sees this young guy, right, with no armor, <laughs> no sword. He's like, are you kidding me, right? You're sending this child out? <laughs> Treating me like a dog. Yeah, this. <laughs> right? Am I a dog? You know, now, 
he probably had a quite a tan from out being a shepherd. Mm-hmm. And Saul may have thought again, you're sending a shepherd out here to attack me, to mm-hmm. fight with me, you know. I'm a warrior. <laughs> I eat shepherds for snacks, <laughs> right? You know, and then he was handsome. So maybe he even thought he was a pampered guy. Who mm-hmm. knows? But he, God gives us these three reasons why Goliath thought that David was unfit for this battle. You know, when you go into a situation overconfident, <laughs> you're looking for trouble. <laughs> he didn't realize what he was facing. After it's over with, he decided I didn't evaluate that quite correctly. <laughs> right. And the Philistine said to David, am I a dog? You come to me with sticks? <laughs> and the Philistine cursed David by his little G gods. Remember the one that was laying face down in the dirt mm-hmm. in front of the Ark of the Covenant and had his head broken off? Mm-hmm. That one. Yeah, he's real strong. Yeah. <laughs> right? He broke his own head. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> right? You know, I don't even know if they had his head back on at this point. The Philistine also said to David, Come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the sky and the beasts of the field. Right? But David said to this Philistine, You come to me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin. I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have taunted. <laughs> David saying, You made a big mistake, dude. <laughs> right? You taunted the Lord of hosts. Okay? This day, not me, not my special talents, but God will deliver you up into my hands. And I will strike you down and remove your head from you, and I will give the dead bodies of the army of the Philistines this day to the birds of the sky and the wild beast of the earth. Okay? That all the earth may know that there's a God in Israel. Amen. You're talking about chewing me up and I'm telling you we're going to chop up your entire army. <laughs> Leave them out there for the birds, birds and the beast. Yeah. <laughs> all right? <clears throat> And all that this assembly may know that the Lord does not deliver by the sword, by spear. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into my hand. If if we're willing to go fight for God, he'll prepare us for the fight. David was ready, wasn't he? Mm, Yes, sir. He had no idea this battle was coming up, but he was prepared. (laughs) And the spirit came upon him and said, go take that dude down. (laughs) (coughs) Excuse me. Then it happened when the Philistine rose and came and drew near to meet David, and David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. Wasn't any caution. Mm. Let's get this over with. (laughs) I'm getting ready to cut your head. I don't even have a sword, and I'm going to cut your head off. (laughs) Right? And David put his hand into his bag, took from it a stone and slung it, and struck the Philistine on his forehead, and the stone sank into his forehead so that he fell on his face on the ground. Knocked that sucker plum out at the least, right? (laughs) Thus David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. And he struck the Philistine and killed him, and there was no sword in David's hand. David ran and stood over the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of his sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. (laughs) The fear has moved to the other side. Because the dude that was 10 or 12 feet tall just bit the dust. 
Do you imagine how thick his skull would be also? Somebody that big, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it would have been tough to bury a stone. Well, of course. It's I wonder if in his excitement to go kill David that he started to run and his helmet fell off. Maybe. <laughs> well, maybe. Right. Because he was exposed in the uh -huh. forehead. <laughs> and David had that slang. And then, <laughs> boom. Yeah, when they say stones, they mean stones, too. They're not little <clears throat> bitty things by any means. It wasn't a pebble. Uh, it was a stone. It was a big stone. You know. Yeah. Whack. You can get real good with that. Have you ever used a slingshot? Mm -hmm. Not that yeah. kind. <laughs> when yeah, I was growing up, I used to make them. Yeah. Yeah. I've tried those others, and I can't even hit a wall with them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, takes practice, like, doesn't it? Not one of those slingshots. It takes practice. And you have to turn loose and ride at that right Exactly end. the right time. Right. Yeah, I used to make those when I was a kid. And the they men of Israel... Right. And Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines as far as the valley and to the gates of Ekron. And the slain Philistines lay along the way from Cherim even to Goth and Ekron, mm -hmm. two of their key cities. <laughs> right? Chased them all the way home. <laughs> and there's dead Philistines all the way there. And the sons of Israel returned from chasing the Philistines and plundered their camps. Now they got the spoils. Right? And David took the Philistines' head and brought it to Jerusalem. That may be up on the pipe. Who owned Jerusalem? The Jebusites. Jerusalem had not been conquered by the Israelites. To this day, it was owned by the Jebusites. David takes the head of Goliath, <laughs> and the first place he goes is to Jerusalem. I think it was some kind of warning. Don't get in my way, guys. <laughs> I'm coming back. Because who conquered Jerusalem? You know, slingshot will travel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now he's carrying the head of, of Goliath. Just think how big that guy's head was. Head would have been. <laughs> <laughs> His forehead was about as big as that wall. <laughs> right? Big old head, right? When Saul saw David going out against the Philistine, he said to Abner, the commander of the army, Abner, whose son is this young man? And Abner said... By your life, O king, I don't know. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And the king said, You inquire whose son the youth is. And when David returned from killing the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the Philistine's head in his hand. He's still carrying that sucker mm -hmm. around. <laughs> I'm assuming the blood had all drained out by now. <laughs> I hope so. Maybe the brains, too. I don't know. I'm getting gross. Sorry. <laughs> And Saul said to him, Whose son are you, young man? And David answered, I am the son of your servant Jesse, the Bethlehemite. Why did he need to know that? Take him off the tax roll. Take him off the tax roll. <laughs> exactly sure. right. Yeah. He's now got a free house. <laughs> right? And what's David going to get? Got him a wife coming up. <laughs> Etc. All that stuff, power. right? I just think it's interesting that Jonathan, who was a key player right before this, mm -hmm. and is a key player right after this, has no part in this. Right, it's kind of you know, kind of weird. I'd say, but God has His plan, and He has His plan for each of us. Something that we specifically are supposed to do. Not everybody is called to be a pastor, right? But we're all called to do something. <clears throat> and at certain times, we're called for certain things. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just for a season. And, and if you don't accept the calling, yes, then you're going to foul up. <laughs> 
Or you're going to miss a huge blessing at the mm -hmm. least, right? Yeah. You know? I mean, what Goliaths in your life could you have taken down if you'd only answered the call? That's true. And I still ask that. And you know, what we're, Goliaths we're are coming 66, up? Yeah, we're 66 years old. And I know for a fact that I could name six times in my life, starting about... 16 that I turned him turned him down and walked away I mean the call was there the spirit was overwhelmingly there and I just chose to say no so you missed a huge blessing six times right. six times but going forward God's still going to bring something up some of it's little bitty stuff, right? Or it seems to us like a little bitty, right? It doesn't have to be huge 12-foot mm. glass, <laughs> right? You know? But sometimes it's just the opportunity to witness or the opportunity to be kind to somebody or, you know, the Lord says to, you know, perfect stranger, like, give them $20. Whatever. What are you giving me for? You know, if you feel the Spirit leading you, trust it. You don't know what God's going to do. Please. Look what he did with a, a stone. Yeah. Not only take down Goliath, the entire Philistine army now Israel. is slaughtered. I don't know how long before they can come back again to create another battle. Not till after Solomon. <laughs> right? Anyway. Questions or comments? Did you learn anything about David and Goliath today that you didn't already know? Such yeah. a familiar story. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I read it again yesterday, and uh, but I was just going to say um, I was about 16 years old, and uh, at our church was a small church, and uh, they, uh, the pastor said, Max, uh, we, we've got some little, little kids out here and you know all kinds of stuff, four five, four and five, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, he said, uh, yeah, you you uh, teach them, and I said, well, I I don't know. I said, well, I'm gonna get you a story, and, and I went to David, and I don't want all that said in there, but I was you know uh, tried to do what it looks into those little kids, you know. <laughs> and the pastor, he said, I laughed like everything, like what you were doing out there, you know. And because of that, I've always uh, likened this, mm -hmm. this uh, David. Oh, no. yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I liked it. Last night, mm -hmm. you, you did a good uh, Good. Do what? Oh, thank you. Oh, no. All right.